Um, I'm ZX. I work on crypto economics and ecosystem for Filecoin. And today I'm just here to talk about Filecoin Plus and uh, how it is uh, and continue to be an economic lever for a more useful network. Um, let's start off with some recap. I think like many of us are pretty familiar, but just for people who just joined us today, I think like um, the Filecoin network is almost seven months old, time flies. And then um, it's now over five exabytes of storage. And just to put things into perspective, I think this is like 10,000 copies of Wikipedia, 100 copies of the whole internet archive. And um, many, many companies took more than a decade to achieve this, um, this scale. So I think we should be really proud of like, being part of this community. And a uh, recap from Live Off, I think that was October last year, Jonathan Victor gave a talk on uh, Filecoin Plus of, uh, of the, the motivations, the, the principles, the mechanisms, and, and so on and so forth. Um, this is the FIP that first established um, the principles uh, of the Filecoin Plus. This is how like all these endeavors are being governed by. This is the vision and the goals that we can all get behind as a community. And then we can iterate on the mechanism and the operations at a much more frequent basis. That's what we are doing today um, during the governance call. And um, we talk about this in a moment. I think in many ways we are breaking lots of lots of uh, lots of new grounds um, in terms of institutional economics, uh, crypto governance, and like public infrastructure in general, right? Like um, people coming together to make decisions for the community, and then many volunteers. Thank you for all the notaries being um, joining us today. And we see lots of like. Um, miners doing BD for the network, I think that's a like huge prop to all our um, ecosystem participants really pushing um, to make this a reality. And this is a notary governance repo. Uh, we, I think like all of us here, many of us here are very familiar with this. I think we have public calls every two weeks. I hope we have Falcon Plus days more often, right? Like what about every like quarter or every a few months we should, uh, every, I guess that's every quarter, uh, every month we can have Falcon Plus day where we really demonstrate and showcase what Falcon can offer to the, broad, to the, to the uh, bigger ecosystem. And I think when we design like the whole process and the, and the, and the foundation, we draw pretty, heavy, drew pretty heavily from the work of uh, Alina Ostrom, who won the Nobel Prize in like, 2009. Uh, her research really demonstrated that it's possible for a community to come together. And there are many real life examples and cases like that uh, to end tragedy of the commons, right? Like I think uh, for crypto to really become mainstream and successful, I think like, we should really be talking about triumph of the commons. And I think we borrow really uh, pretty heavily from lots of the principles and learning that she had developed in her research. And here's some stats. I think like um, we have close to like 1.9 petabyte uh, granted to notaries. Uh, I think 10% of that is allocated. Lots of lots of hard work went into this. I think like today's uh, Falcon Plus Day is a really good demonstration of like the work that we have put in as a community to get to where we are. And I think I'm really excited for all these metrics and our workflow that we're getting. We are just going to optimize lots of these things, really improve um, the onboarding experience of Falcon Plus. And as another dashboard, uh, Falcon app, I think like uh, as mentioned, I think on Falcon network itself, there is like close to 14 petabyte of uh, storage uh, being stored, being used in storage deals. And I think like the cost of storage is pretty competitive on Falcon, even more so through Falcon Plus. Um, even though my personal opinion has always been like Filecoin, it's store, uh, using Filecoin is never just about cost, right? Even cost can be super competitive, but I think like it is, using Filecoin should really about the experience. And then we have lots and lots of uh, companies joining our ecosystem in defining that new experience, right? Like I think like um, really making the vision of an Airbnb for cost services uh, come true. Another pretty big moment happened just a month ago. I think like the network crossed its baseline for the very first time. Um, um, so for people who are not too, very familiar with this, uh, in terms of token minting through storage mining on Filecoin, there are two components. Uh, one is uh, through simple minting, uh, which is like the dominant way of minting in most uh, crypto networks. It has its advantage and disadvantage, but there's also another uh, minting mechanism on Filecoin called baseline minting. It is basically minting based on a network KPI. And the network has defined like pretty aggressive KPIs in the sense that we want to have um, starting from like 2.5 exabyte of storage from day zero and growing exponentially every year. For uh, the Filecoin network to be minting at its full capacity, uh, we are going to reach like one yottabyte of storage in like 20 years. Um, so this is very ambitious. And then when, once we went across that for the very first time, um, I think now we the minting is it's at full force. And I think like for our first year target, the network hit that within six months. So this is really impressive. Like I think like a huge congress to the whole community and we also enter into a new stage in some way, 
rather if you look at look at the mental model of like the stages of the economy we are back we are building capacity demonstrating that like oh decentralized distributed storage can work it's reliable it could be useful this is where lots of committed capacity is happening like uh, to show that um, to show like this Falcon network it's it's really about useful work and um, and us like simple minting start to slow down as time progresses and baseline minting start to pick up I think we are now at this mark where we're starting to transition into the stage two, right? Like where uh, we start to care a lot more about uh, we 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 have been caring a lot more a lot about quality of service, but I think now this marks this transition of like uh, we are competing on both the quality of the service um, from from the point of view of the miner as a provider of the services on the platform, and we also start to drive up new payment as a as a source of revenue. And uh, I think this is where we are, very exciting. Now we are entering this new phase of the like, very fast growth in making the network more useful. Um, to just summarize on the recap, I think like decentralized storage at scale as a novel concept is really getting proven. Uh, we've committed capacity, even though there could be like, uh, there could be some like forced impression that it may not be, like lots of this storage might not be um, being used, but it's also important to remember, it's, uh, it's important to reach a certain scale for the network at a very fast pace. Right, it's just not possible through like real data because it takes lots of overhead to make deals, um, as many of us are aware. And uh, and through committed capacity, we demonstrate that it's reliable. It's it's also useful. And I think like the storage prices are quite competitive today. And then as mentioned, many new companies are joining the ecosystem to make it even better. And uh, this whole Airbnb for cost services, right? It's not just about storage. We start from storage, but it doesn't end there. There's lots of value added services that can be provided on top of the storage. And, um, and yeah, I think as a decentralized network, the future of our network is really in the hands of the community. So thank you everyone again for coming and really participating in, uh, in Falcon Plus. And, um, and then um, with this recap in mind, I think like um, Falcon is really unique in a sense that it's well positioned to support both Web2 interactions and Web2 use cases. And taking a step back and thinking about like, I think I remember during lift off, there were many discussion about how Falcon introduced this pretty unique new building block to the whole Web3 ecosystem that could enable a, a ton of new interactions. Like one big one is like data DAO, data commons, uh, where people come together uh, for uh, to preserve information or, or um, for a shared common goal. And then we realized actually Falcon Plus really is one of these kind of first data DAO on the Falcon network. And the, this uh, there's something special about this data DAO is that um, uh, DAO stands for this, um, Decentralized Autonomous Organization for people who are not too familiar. Um, what's special about Falcon Plus really is there is this on portal incentive to provide um, this, uh, this extra economic uh, boost or lever to making the network more useful. So like just a quick comparison in terms of the sector contents, right? Like sector is a unit of storage on Filecoin. Think of it as like a storage container. Uh, you can put different content inside a container. Uh, for um, there are three main kinds: uh, committed capacity, regular deals, and Falcon Plus deals. This means this is meant to be a gradient, in a sense that when there is a lot, when there is um, supply with no demand, miners who are both providers of the service on the platform but also maintainers of the blockchain just commit capacity to the network, right? And then as demand comes around, they might convert some of that to regular deals. They might take Falcon Plus deals for an additional reward. So as we can see on the reward side, um, uh, it's one X and one X, uh, everything is normalized to uh, committed capacity at 32 gigabyte sectors, uh, one X to one X uh, to not create an incentive for uh, self deals or fake deals. And then 10 X for the Falcon Plus deals. And then deal fees, as mentioned, it's an Airbnb for cloud services. So it's really negotiated between like clients and miners. Um, even though there's some interesting, um, there's some new FIP which, which is in line with the initial vision for committed capacity that we'll touch on in a moment. But for regular deals and Falcon Plus deals really depends on their conversation and the negotiation between like clients and miners. Uh, so far, the prices that we saw are very competitive. And then because there's deals, you get additional on-chain benefits. There's also an on-chain cost of publishing a message. There is a cost here for regular deals and Falcon Plus deal, but it's not relevant for committed capacity since there, there are no deals in it. Um, and then there's also uh, every interaction with the Falcon network requires some kind of gas. There would be always be a gas cost as uh, uh, determined by the demand and supply for using a network. So for every unit of uh, power, quality adjusted power, there's a one X cost for uh, 32 gigabyte sectors in committed capacity. 
stack cost would be half if the sector size doubled, doubles. And then uh, similarly for regular deals, you not create incentive for fake deals. And then if you think about that, given a 10X multiplier, it really is one tenth uh, for Falcon Plus deals uh, in the 32 gigabyte sectors. But however, there's also an additional overhead cost, right? Like it takes time to negotiate a deal. Um, coming to our governance meeting, there's also like different process that we put in place. So there's some additional time cost, labor cost if like deals and Falcon Plus deals. So going forward, this is like how we are thinking about this. I think um, we, as in, uh, we, I think as a community, I think there are lots of efforts in driving down the public storage deals cost because we want more deals on the network and more useful, useful um, storage. And I think like with like new FIP improvement, technology improvement, we increase the network uh, throughput that will also drive down the unit power gas cost. Like, I think based on some of our analysis that this is the most dominant cost today. So we really hope to drive that down uh, for the whole ecosystem. And then uh, Falcon Plus as a community, I think like uh, us, we, um, I think we are, aware, we are aware of this. I just want to be a bit more explicit here. Like as we, I think they mentioned, uh, mentioned that as well, as, as we like put down certain like processes in play, we should also be very cognizant of the cost that we place in making these deals. We want that to be cheap to use uh, without getting abused. And, uh, and this is hard uh, because like we, we should talk about in the next slide, uh, I just want to touch uh, on committed capacity real quick. As the name suggests, committed capacity means that you're just committing capacity. It doesn't have to be like uh, random data. It could be like personal data. It could be any data. If as a miner, I want to store something for somebody else for free, I can choose to do that. Then I don't enjoy certain benefits, but I also don't incur some additional costs. The goal here is to create this like different building blocks for emergence of behavior on the Falcon network. So going back to overhead costs and the reason why it's difficult or expensive sometimes, I think like really governance is hard, right? Like I think many of us here, we spend, we put lots of effort and energy in defining the processes um, to, to, make collective, uh, to make collective decision and also understanding the economy is difficult, right? Like I, I, uh, I think there, there's always um, grants and, and uh, interest in seeing more analytics on the network in helping us reduce the cost of governance. And of course, collective management of complex system, basically two of this combined means like hard um, squared. Um, and, but um, not, I feel whenever we're in a moment like this, I think we can always return back to the principles, right? This is why we set up the structure in this way, right? This is the broad set of goals that we want to achieve collectively as a community. And these are our guiding principles in terms of our decision-making, right? Decentralization and diversity, both in terms of geographic location and also use cases. Um, because it's a public network with lots of uh, token at stake, so transparency and accountability really matters. And this is where lots of the reputation systems that people are building on really come into the picture. Uh, it's governed by the community. And as mentioned, um, because we want to reduce the cost of governance. So like both in terms of monitoring and dispute resolution should be low cost. Um, trust, it's, uh, trust is earned over time. And um, also very importantly, I think like Compliance is really a big thing. I think like um, for uh, blockchain to really go mainstream. And I think like there's always terms of service to, pro to protect the interests of like miners, clients and the network. And at the end of the day, it really is about how do we, how can we uh, work together to make the network more useful? And so when, uh, when we feel like sometimes we have this hard governance problem, it's also quite simple, right? Now that we have the protocol has proven that distributed storage at scale is reliable, so now our question is, how can we better utilize the storage on Falcon? How can we onboard more and more um, useful data onto the Falcon network? And Falcon Plus, as we saw on the unit economics, really is a, lev is a lever in our toolbox. Um, I, and I named this talk as an economic lever. I think there's also a point to make about, there could be other DAOs on the Falcon network, right? Like we could be putting in funds from the other ecosystem as well to support uh, storage on Falcon. And uh, there could be other new structure uh, that could emerge from this basic building blocks of like a storage container. You can put different content inside there um, um, from this kind of primitive. And I think uh, the second point here is, I think it's really important to continue to showcase the power of Filecoin as an Airbnb for cloud services. And I think part of that, this is also part of the goal of today where we bring everybody together to showcase like what we have accomplished and what we have done and what is possible on Filecoin, right? I really wish, let's say the next time we do a Falcon Plus day, we can have more clients come in like and, and share like different kinds of use cases, different apps and so on and so forth. Um, that'll, be, uh, that'll be really, really good. And I think like 
uh, from the protocol's point of view, right, like fast retrieval is possible, encryption is possible, replication is possible, but because we want to build this emergence into the protocol, right, like the portal doesn't care that much about these other um, value added services, so it really needs to emerge and need to happen with the community. And lastly, I think like going back to the reducing the cost of governance and the monitoring, I think like um, blockchain networks or economic networks in general are evolving like organism, right? Like there are uh, many stages like, like similar to the stages of the economy. So like um, depending on where we are, we can also make pragmatic decisions. We really reduce the governance complex and monitoring complexity, right? One example could be, I think we talked about this before, like if data is public and retrievable, then like that could be like a golden standard, a uh, standard for like Falcon plus deals, right? Like it's easy for everyone to observe in the community. And lastly, I just want to uh, reinforce, I think like Falcon is really about win-win and growing the pie for everyone. And um, this is like something that I think we should take lots of pride in and really like share that with the broader crypto and uh, Web3 and even like other uh, economic network and ecosystem. Um, great, I think this is just the beginning. I think at Live Off, we mentioned that uh, I'm very excited to make some history with you guys together. I think it's safe to say that we have already made some history, uh, both in terms of the scale of the network, the collective governance, and the different kinds of incentive that we um, that we come to come up uh, that we came up together as a community. And I, I'm pretty confident that uh, we will continue to make history together. And I'm very proud of being part of the community. Thank you.